it's a good habit to bring your Bible. And if you want to have memory, solid print is always better than pixels. Pixels are illusory. So when you are getting your training your child's memory, train him from solid print. This is free advice. Train him from solid print. Get him to read and imagine the story. Brain wires better. Him seeing digital pictures doesn't create good memory. Did you understand? It kills creativity. But when you read the story he's hearing, later he will start reading himself. So solid print creates long-term memory and the imagination where they evoke the stories. And biblical stories are excellent for creative memory because the Hebrew language is very pictorial. So Bible records actual incidents as they happen. Actual stories. When a child is reading the story, you're reading the story to the child, child evokes excellent pictorial memory forms that promotes their brain memory, brain wiring, creativity. Did you understand all this? Okay. That's gathering among good advice. Friends together with Jesus. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. So that is Jesus' bottom line and top line. When we begin friendships in Christ as we do in church, this is to lay down our life because it is better to give than to receive. Now we all come with different ideas of friendships and good experiences of friendship and bad experiences of friendship. I remember when, when we were doing the cross country at, at, at St. Thomas's College, uh, there's a cross country, you know, in the sports meets, there's a, we run through the, run through Mount Lavinia here and there. And I shared my socks with my friend. So I want to give you advice. If you share your socks with your friend, let him have it. <laughs> and I wore it again because this silly fellow had come without his socks. And he was a better runner than me. I said, okay, I'll run anyway with my tennis shoes or whatever. You, 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 can, you can probably win it. Here are my socks. Such was our friendship. So I gave him my socks. I ran in my old little tennis shoes and I couldn't run much anyway. He came first or second. I foolishly wore the same socks that evening for something else. And he had some, not a mouth problem, but a foot problem. And I got it for some time. The cost of friendship. Uh, so lay down your life is the basis of Christian friendship. I'll read it again. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. So we have, now in your background, think of a bad friendship you had. Think of a good friendship. When a friend let you down. And when a friend upheld you. We have had all this, isn't it? We have had all this. So when we come to church, we already come with a mix of friendship experiences. So when we come to church, we had to get born again in Christ, in the spirit, and we begin to develop because we are born of God, now we are learning to be friends in the spirit. But we still live in a soul and we also have a body. What to do? Tell you never what to do. Even after we are born again, we have a soul. Even after we are born again, we have a body. So now all the, all the old memories keep coming back. When you are tasting something, which tastes last longest on the tongue? Sweet, sour, bitter, salt. Which lasts long, longest on the tongue? Bitter. So in friendship experiences, what lasts longest in memory and heart? Bitter ones. Bitter ones. We have to face fact, isn't it? Now, God designed receptors of the tongue, greater percentage of bitter receptors for our good. Because if someone is going to poison us, we are going to know it from our tongue at least. That's, that's, a, that's no, no, seriously, yes. 
So kings those days had someone who would taste the food before he eats. And of course, in modern democracies, we don't have kings. We never had a king. We never want to have a king. And that problem is not there. So when we come to church, part of the deal is, in our born-again experience, we get the know-how to transform bitter into sweet. Rome is not built in one day. Bitterness is transformed into sweet, not in one day. But we are at it. So we are in a journey. We are in a process. Don't give it up. Halfway through, you feel changing church. What happens? You have to start from scratch. There's one perfect church. You want to go there, die today. Physically. Where is that perfect church? There. The most perfect apostle, most perfect prophet, most perfect pastor, most perfect teacher, most perfect evangelist. And his name is Jesus Christ. Only way to go there is die and get translated to heaven. I don't think any of you want to do that today. So what to do? We have each other to make the best of it. Okay. Greater love has no one than this one lays down his life for his friends. So you have come here to give more than to get and we begin that by worship. So please be here for worship at 9.30. But that's the only thing you give. Not only to God, you're singing voice to each other. You're cheer to each other. You, the praise, isn't it? it? It all blends together. Of course, we worship him only. But the exercise of being together for worship, we give each other. Wonderful thing. And only the Church of Jesus Christ meets with this regularity, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three times a week, certainly at least once a week. So it's a very powerful agreement made on earth that moves heaven and keeps Haiti shut. And we have about 350,000 maximal, maximum born again Christians to close the hell that 21 million people create. I'm not saying they're creating hell all the time, but some of the time. Got the point? So we have 350,000 little lights, little lamps. We better keep it bright as possible by helping each other, filling each other's lamp with oil. That's not enough. Take that wick and take that scissor and chop off that fellow's black. That is Christian friendship. Do it gently. Warn him. Don't plunge on him, you know. Okay. Got you. Cut you. No, not like that. Tell him, you know, you're getting black by the day and you're, you're more smoke than light, my friend. I can hardly breathe when you're around because you're smoking it up. I have to tip, chip off your wick and take the char off. I want to add some oil, which is nice. Everybody likes adding oil. But when it comes to scissor part, don't leave it to your pastor alone. That fellow will give, get a name saying, as he sees me, he chops me up. Why you're smoking up? You're, 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 making, you're asphyxiating others. You get the point? So your friends, you are in a cell group for what? To slowly, in friendship, add oil, pleasant. Take the scissor and cut off the charred end of the week. Unpleasant? What to do? We have to do that as friends also. Okay? Understood friendship? Which is easier? Adding oil is certainly easier. Everybody likes oil, especially scented oil. But you have to take a pair of scissors and chop off the wicks also. So message is also 66% adding oil. At least 34%. Get the point? That's Christian friendship. You are my friends if you do what I command you. That only Jesus Christ can say. You write down in your Bible, don't get to that. Only Jesus Christ can say, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Because only he gives perfect commandments. Okay, you, you tell your neighbor, okay, don't try this with me. This is only for Jesus Christ. 
you can tell your husband also you can tell 